six thirty. There we go. It being six thirty on a Wednesday, October the sixth of twenty twenty one. Uh, we're going to open the planning board meeting for the night. Uh, this meeting is being hosted uh, remotely pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law and the governor's March 15th, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the Bridgewater Planning Board will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but AVF will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time. This meeting is being recorded and with 40, within 48 hours, we will post a link of the recording on the town's website and or the town's social media page. <clears throat> uh, uh, following members of the planning board are participating remotely. Uh, myself, Michael McDonald, vice chair, uh, Jean Garino, the clerk, uh, Mr. Steve Geller, Mr. Raymond Ajemian, uh, and associate members Astrid Rojas and Julia Santa Arcangelo. Uh, so we're going to start by taking an item out of order. We're going to be doing the uh, the Crimson Heights bond reduction first. Uh, our chairman, uh, Pat Driscoll, uh, will be joining us uh, shortly. Um, so we're just going to take care of that before he gets here. So um, Yeah, so um, you received an email from the developer, Mr. Paulson Cotta, um, requesting um, a release of $31,630 from the bond. Um, the planning board is currently holding $116,922.92. Um, uh, Zhu Antonero, the DPW director, did review it, um, has not provided written comment, but I spoke with him yesterday. Um, he is comfortable with the 31,000 being released. Um, he indicated to me that the only thing that he had concerns with was the drainage and that the remaining amount would be comfortable, would be enough to hold back if there were any issues with the drainage. So that was um, the verbal recommendation and comment I got from the town engineer slash DPW director. Um, I texted him a couple of times and he hasn't responded. So I'm not sure that he's available. He did have a medical procedure today. So I don't know what his status is at the moment. So um, I'll let the board do what they will with it. Okay, uh, personally, I'm comfortable proceeding with the verbal recommendation. Um, I don't know if anybody else has thoughts on that. Uh, no, I'm, I'm good with that. I am also, but I, I would um, put one stipulation that, uh, that Mr. Antonero send a written email confirming it. That's all. Okay. Good idea. You can get that from him when he's back in the office. So we would just need a, a motion from somebody to um, release uh, $31,630 from the bond amount for Crimson Heights. I'll make the motion to release uh, $31,630 from the bond in Crimson Heights um, with the stipulation that uh, Mr. Antonero um, send an email or written some sort of written document that he, he, uh, he feels that that's warranted. I'll second that. Okay, any, uh, any further discussion? All right, then we'll take a uh, roll call vote. Uh, Mr. Jemian? Yes. Mr. Geller? Mr. Geller? Yes. Uh, Ms. Garino? Yes. Uh, I believe we don't need the associates voting on this, so I'm a, I'm a yes as well. Great, thank you. Um, do you want to take care of the A and R plan um, while you wait for Pat for the subdivision, or do you want to just get started on the subdivision? Uh, yeah, let's take the A and R first. That should be the a little simpler, right? Yes. I don't believe I have Mr. Gormley on. Jennifer, do you? Uh, I don't see him. Was he intending to come? I believe so. He he did log on earlier and we did speak earlier. So I believe he was. Oh, I apologize. Well, if he's not here, then I'm not sure that the board's going to entertain his request. We just can shoot him an email.
Or Mr. Costco. Mr. Costco did the plan. He's not on either. No. All right, I suppose we can, uh, we can give them a minute or two to uh, see if they respond. If not, we'll just proceed with the, to uh, the subdivision plan. Yeah, that's fine. I know that Larry's on, so if you want to get started with that. Yeah, yeah, we'll just get started with that then. So moving on to the uh, the public hearing for the uh, subdivision at Serenum Way. Um, I believe the proponent's here, so... So we have plenty of correspondence on this one. Oops, Larry. Keep trying to unmute you and keep moving. <laughs> I didn't move anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, Patrick's here as well. Yeah, he's joining now. All right, you ready to start? Or... Yeah, Pat just joined. Yeah. Where would you like me to start, Mr. Silva, with um, the first sheet of the plan or with Azu's comments or? Well, let me just uh, summarize where we are and how we got to this point. Uh, we, uh, Silver Engineering had submitted a revised set of plans. I believe the date on them is uh, September 28th. Uh, they were in response to the comments that were received from the town engineer dated uh, September 1st. There were a number of items um, which we not only made the changes on the plans, but we also provided a letter dated September 27th, 2021. I don't know if you want to put that one up. Maybe that's the easiest place to start. Do you have that? Absolutely. Let me just blow that up really quickly. Can you see that okay? Yep. Yep. I can see that. Yeah, I'm here, by the way. Okay. okay. So, so, and in this letter on September 27th, uh, what we did was we identified the town engineer's comment from the September 1st, uh, September 1st communication. And then what we did is provided uh, the response to it. Uh, so, for example, on the first one, um, the, the co uh, comment was about additional intersection grading should be provided at the intersection of High Street and Serenum Way, including existing and proposed spot elevations and contours in order to ascertain that runoff will probably be, will be properly channelized uh, to the proposed um, catch basins and obviate uh, any pooling of stormwater at the intersection. So our response to it was that the plans uh, have been revised to illustrate the additional spot elevations along with the sides of High Street. The catch basin rim on the westerly side of intersection has been revised. And this information can be found on uh, sheet six. So if on sheet six, um, catch basin one, that's where that uh, will, uh, would show that that was uh, taken care of. Uh, the second one that he um, asked about uh, his comment two was that the proposed grading on the south side of the dwelling to be located on lot nine includes more than five feet of fill to replace thereon, which would result in uncontrolled runoff being directed towards High Street. A uh, design provision needs to be incorporated into the proposed grading plan to intercept and retain uh, runoff on site. So on this particular one, the grading has been revised to provide a swale located uh, parallel to High Street that will direct more of the uncontrolled runoff towards the proposed street drainage. And that is also found on sheet six. The easement, uh, which goes along with that because there was an easement created, uh, that one can be found on sheet four. Um, uh, the next comment, number three, the required uh, gravel subbase underneath the pavement and uh, in the drainage utility trench details should be revised from being characterized as required as required to 18 inch gravel 
M1.03.1 to match the roadway cross section detail. Um, and our response to that was trench detail on sheet eight has been revised as requested. Um, the fourth one was that there is significant grading proposed on the abutting land of um, Mamity, assessors map five, lot 66 at 60 Copperfield Drive. Um, is there any written agreement by and between the applicant and uh, Mamity for the proposed grading as Mamity is not listed as a co-applicant? Uh, the Mamity land is not within the Serenum Way subdivision locus. Uh, we, um, our response and uh, was that we assigned agreement from the owners of 60 uh, Copperfield Drive is attached. And we did provide that as part of that letter um, uh, to, the, to the board, that which was, I think, the next page at that point. And then um, the fifth uh, comment by the town engineer was a very lengthy one, but it was the, sub the subdivision plan now shows that nitrogen loading area would be restricted based on uh, gross square footage of the nine lots in the nitrogen loading area. Each lot can be developed for a maximum of three bedrooms. And this restriction of bedroom count must be placed on the respective conveyance deeds and noted on each building permit and subsequent building certificate of occupancy. The nitrogen loading area shall be left in its natural state as undeveloped land in perpetuity and its ownership shall be maintained um, and controlled by several owners of the nine lots. The idea of any lot being developed for additional bedrooms over um, three bedrooms with an individual treatment unit, the denitrification provision must be discarded because of the potential lack of enforcement mechanism. Um, we acknowledge his comment. Uh, we agree with most of what he said there. Um, I don't know as though something being an enforcement issue or not is really something that uh, should be controlled by the board, but um, we, we didn't take that comment any further. Um, the um, comment number six, the grading around the drainage basin is significantly um, steep. The material composition and method of stabilization to be specified and provided for review and approval. And, um, and keep in mind that this area that we're talking about is actually in East Bridgewater. Uh, the, our response was the plans have been revised to address this concern, riprap stabilization. The steep slopes has been added to the drainage basin design. The East Bridgewater Conservation Commission has consulted, was consulted due to the notice of intent filing and agreed with this stabilization method and that's shown on sheet nine. Um, I should also point out that, um, uh, well, there, there has, I think you have a response from our zoo um, on this latest set of plans. I saw something today came in. Um, and I think that one of his comments, which I'll reiterate here too, is, is that after um, an approval from the uh, Bridgewater Planning Board, um, the uh, Conservation Commission in East Bridgewater uh, also has to approve the drainage, both from a stormwater from a stormwater permit point of view, not so much from a wetlands point of view, because we're outside the buffer zone. But they but they have a um, a consultant um, that will be reviewing that, and that process uh, we've paid uh, our client has paid for the review consultant to do his job. So that's all I really have. Um, I know if, I don't know if you want to um, address the response uh, that came in from the town engineer or not at this point. Mattel, do you want me to take over? Continue. Yeah. Continue. That'd be good. Um, Mr. Silver, Mr. Antonero, was Lot Nine A considered in the um, nitrogen loading calculations? Do we know how many bedrooms are in the existing house? Um, I... Because that's part of the parcel, that's, right? So it's technically a lot. Yes. Uh, is that the question directed to me, Mr. Chilin? To, to you and to Mr. Silva. I was, just, I was looking at it and I can't find whether 9A is 
considered as part of the nitrogen loading loading count. Right. And so if you look at you the look at requirements the for 10, 10 square feet per bedroom uh, uh, for each. For each Okay, so if you if you if you calculate Mr. Chairman, those lots those have lots to be no more than three bedrooms. Three bedrooms. Right, but my question, Mr. Antonero, is nine A is forty four thousand square foot lot. How many bedrooms are in that existing home, and does it affect the neighborhood at all? Uh, now the presumption. The presumption in the uh, regulation um, for the uh, zone uh, to protect them is that if you have that square footage, that much area, then that is adequate area to uh, handle the uh, wastewater loading that will the that will be introduced into the ground. I don't because think I don't have, think you understand my question. How many bedrooms are in lot nine A that's an existing home that were breaking off onto its own lot? Oh, that, oh, okay. that, that question has to be answered by Mr. Uh, Silva. And is that taken into consideration with the nitrogen loading calculations? And does that home also have to be restricted to, let's say, four bedrooms? The, the calculation that I reviewed uh, was relative to the proposed lots. Well, one of the proposed lots is 9A because that's the, that's the house on the main piece. So 9A is a proposed lot and it has an existing dwelling on it. Right. So if it's a four bedroom house, then that would be an issue because you will not have, when you combine all these square footages, it will not have adequate area to sustain four bedrooms. So, Well, it's, it's a 44,000 square foot lot though. So I guess my question is, is was that 44,000 square feet and the number of bedrooms considered in nitrogen loading calculation? That would be correct. That would be correct. It was or it wasn't? Your question was if it was it inc included, and I, the answer is it was. Can you confirm that, Mr. Silva? If I can find it. Azu, do you have it right there? Uh, no, because I'm, uh, I'm on my cell phone. <laughs> well, that, that can be something that need, uh, while you are looking at it, if you don't have it, that could be something that needs to be conditioned in the decision. If the, if the board were to, uh, elect to approve it. I think that is something that can be made a condition. Yeah, I can I can try to also, uh, Rebecca's at another meeting. I can try to see if she can tell me that directly. Because if that, because for example, if that's a five bedroom house, that's a problem, potentially. Uh, okay, well, I could, uh, do I have the do you have the assessor's card for that for that house? But I guess my question is, was that forty four thousand? And I guess we can get that answer later. But was that area and were the number of bedrooms calculated as part of the overall project? Uh, I I can verify for that for you in about uh, seven minutes. If you if you want to be discussing any other items, instead of getting hung up, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hung up on this one, yeah. yeah. So, so, my, so, my, so my next question is: I'm glad I'm glad we have the agreement with the neighbor. Um, but wouldn't it be best to have a um, grading easement on that property with the neighbor, just in case parcels change hands, the developers change hands, or it seems like a, is there a reason why we can't obtain a grading easement? Well, well, I think if you, if you go ahead. I'm sorry, Azu, I interrupted you. Okay, hold on. I uh, I need to move around. My my signal is messed up right now. 
So I, I guess my concern is I don't know how this would hold up just a written letter of somebody saying they agree to grading. Typically on lots and things that need grading, we'd have a grading easement. Is that something that could be obtained as part of the condition of approval? Uh, the problem, uh, the, problem uh, the problem with the grazing uh, is, with Mr. Chairman, it's desirable, but I don't think uh, that will be practical on that uh, because if you look at the grading, it almost extends into the back of the house. So I don't know how you're going to have a grading easement over an existing house. But what you can require is that the that uh, house built include, uh, include that grading and uh, be certified as such. And that is one of the reasons why I recommend that there were the, the signatures of the uh, Mr. and Mrs. Maddie of uh, Mamdi uh, be notarized to make sure that they agree to this, just like any other thing that you do with their real, real estate transactions, uh, where you require uh, that the agreements be notarized so that there's no Somebody's coming back later and saying, well, I did not really understand what I was agreeing to. But, but, but they, Mr. they are online. They Mr. are online tonight. So, so Mr. Antonero, the thing is, though, let's say this project is delayed for two or three years and those people sell the house. If there's nothing recorded with that lot, then I don't see how this holds up if it's not recorded. Well, no, your, appro your approval with the conditions of approval and the approved subdivision plan, which by this agreement includes that law. That, that your approval applies to that. If our, you approve it. Our, our, approval, our approval, right, but there's, not, there's gonna be nothing recorded to that lot though. We're recording something on everything else except for that lot. Why wouldn't we have a grading easement tied to that no, lot? It will, it will include, your decision will include that the grading, that plan be noted on the chain of title on the uh, on on the uh, this property. That's all. You just want to make sure that it's graded the way it's approved. Mr. Uh, it just it just seems like for any other work that we require in somebody else's property, we require an easement before the tie to the start of work. What's the difference here? Yeah. Most most of the you know, what you are alluding to, Mr. Chairman. Okay, what you are alluding to is is similar to when somebody is doing work and you have a specific drainage easement. This here has nothing to do with drainage. This year does not have anything to do with habitability of the property. It has to do with them trying to avoid the installation of a routine wall. If that area is graded up and leveled, I'm not going to, I cannot imagine somebody going back to fill it up to create a, a, a need for a wall. I'm not worried about somebody filling it back up. I'm worried about them not not being able to do it. If, if you secure the rights through a grading easement, then you have the rights whether or not the parties get along or not. There's really nothing to argue about. Why wouldn't we just ask for a simple grading easement to, to be recorded with that deed so that if that house is ever sold or this project's ever sold, that, that grading that we need for the drainage so that there's not a retaining wall can be constructed properly. Well, because because you have to you have to do that grading in order for them to get an approval from you or any release of a certificate of compliance or a certificate of a, a, a completed a project. That work has to be done first. You can you can require that to be the first thing that they do before anything else. So I don't see uh, why would be imposing a requirement for an easement. Just say that work needs to be done first. If they don't do it, no, they're not going to build a permit on any of those lots that they're looking to. I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine with that. Then that's fine. Uh, if we handle it that way. No, because if you look at the proposed grading, that's why I'm saying require that the grading be done first before anything else. That's that's that's. Exactly. Um.
And, and Mr. Antonero, what you're what you're requesting is that parcel A, the entire parcel A, be left as open space and to be controlled by a homeowners association. That is correct, and that the ownership of, uh, be refer be included in all the deeds for the individual lot, so no one person claims ownership of it. And that is how you will protect the the integrity of that lot. Sure. I don't have any other questions. Board, are the board members have questions, concerns? Yeah, kind of what you were talking about the uh, the, the easement there for the uh, uh, grading. I, I'm I'm just confused. Maybe I'm misunderstanding how that works. But uh, even if they do it first as part of the project starting, if that property's ever sold to a different owner who say wants to change the grading in that area, couldn't that present a problem down the line if there's no easement on that? No, Mr. No, Mr. Mr. McDonald, because for them to do the work, they have to be bringing almost five feet of fill on their land. How would they do that? And you have to look at the logical things that people do. If, if, they, if they reverse where the case where oh, gee, they might be cutting down the area, then that would be a concern. But if they already cut the area and level it out and see it, I cannot imagine somebody bringing five feet of fill to raise the back of the animal. This is actually, this grading improves the, the utility of the Marmadies land. So, so, the, so the only thing that you are really looking for is to make sure that that grading is done. Okay, you, that makes you, sense. I guess, I guess what Michael and I, what I'm trying to say anyway, I think. Look along High Street. There's a grading and slope easement right there, right? Why is that? Why is that, why is that there? If, because if, because if they, High Street. Yeah. Go ahead. But you are talking. You are talking about work associated with the right of way. The grading and easement is restricted to the right of way. Adjacent so to the why, right of why, why wouldn't we have a similar reasoning to that? This lands, and once it's graded, the easement goes away. Mr. Chairman, go ahead, Mr. John. Yeah, I'm I'm listening to this, and I I, I hear good argument on both sides. Something I never really considered, but let's assume that there is not a absolute need to have the drainage easement. What's wrong with simply getting it anyway, just to make sure things are okay? What's the issue? No, no, it's not a drainage easement though, Mr. It's a great- Well, either way. If, 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 the, if the purpose were for drainage, then of course you secure it, because you want to make sure that that drainage uh, facility functions as designed. That's not the case here. The case here is that they want to cut that whole area to level it up. So if you are requiring that that area be cut first before they do any more work, then when once that is cut, you don't need the. So the idea of getting an easement on record and then releasing the uh, then turning around and releasing the easement seems to me rather com uh, convoluted and cumbersome. Just simply require that the work be done before anything else is done. And that no building permit be signed off on until it's done and verify that it's done. So but the issue then is <laughs> you are enforcing compliance ahead of time rather than have to chase them around later on. Mr. Jeremy, are you done? Any other board members? Uh, I can't see, but if there are any members of the public that would like to speak, please raise your hand or identify yourself in the chat. Not seeing anyone with any questions. anybody no all right just, Pat. mrs Greeno, go ahead i'm sorry um just on the um nitrogen loading 
Now what that is per square foot of the of each lot that allows it to have the number of bedrooms. Correct, Mr. Antonero. What's it, 10,000 square feet per bedroom? Okay, so what has happened, uh, Mrs. Carino? What happens, okay, when you're in that area, the uh, state environmental code mandates that in order to meet aquifer protection requirements, okay, based on their study, what we are going to do a subsurface sewage disposal system, which is basically called septic system, that you need to demonstrate that you have 10,000 square feet per bedroom that you propose. That factors to guarantee that that's proper treatment. And if that primary system were to fail, you're not going to go around chasing to find enough land to do it. So if you look at their plan, what Title V allows you to do is that you can create a nitrogen loading area that is specifically designated as such that cannot be developed and that has enough square footage so that if you added all the square footages of the individual lots plus the square footage of that nitrogen loading area and you divide it by 10,000 square feet, that gives you the total number of bedrooms that can be supported in that development. That is how I came up reviewing what they did, that each lot can only sustain three bedrooms. You follow me? So, so you, can, yes. you, can, you can either, right, you can either do 30,000 square feet for each lot, and each lot contains that. But the configuration, I think what they're trying to do is the configuration of the layout is such that they want to com com also conform to your length of road requirement and uh, layout requirements. So that's why they did it that way. Try to get each lot to have 30,000 square feet will kind of look funky. And you, you end up with a lot of uh, pork chop gerrymandered lots as opposed to neatly laid out lots. Okay. The, Does that make any sense? The reason I had asked was because of an article I had read in Sandwich where they had the nitrogen loading, loading. issue and um, they certain houses if they didn't have the gentrification septic system they had to they had um two bedroom houses and that's what i was wondering about the square footage yeah okay yeah okay. Also remember I remember the designation uh, in in that cape the cape actually has a lot more a lot more requirement for the simple reason i'm getting the feedback yeah so so cape cod actually because it's an island and surrounded by water uh their requirements are a little bit more stringent than inland areas where we are okay So, so, Mr. Chair, on, on that note, do we need to go back and find out what lot 9A, was that included in this? I mean, if you look at the, the drawings, there only states lots 1 through 9. That's, I am back in my uh, laptop, and while you were talking, Mr. Mr. Geller, I'm looking that up. Why, why are you looking that up? Do you mind if I ask a question, Mr. Geller, or do you have another one? No, go right ahead. Um, just street lights, Mr. Silva. There's there's no detail for post lights or for street lights. Is there a plan for street lights? Are they going to be individual lots, or how's that going to be handled? You're muted, Larry. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm okay now, right? Uh, no, they were supposed to, they were going to be um, individual uh, lights in the driveways, and I believe that that was requested in. Uh, in earlier correspondence to you. 
Uh, and I did want to, while I have you, I did want to tell you though that if you look on page uh, five of the plan set in the top left hand corner, it shows the nitrogen loading breakdown for that lot, and it's for lots one through nine. The existing house is not part of that, not 9A. It's just the lots that are within the subdivision. So we need to determine the number of veterans for that house. Um, I don't know if does anyone have access there to the assessor's card for 9A? I don't know if I have it in my file here. I do, Larry. Do you happen to know the street address on High Street by any chance? Um, it's, um, it says it right there. Oh, let me see. Wow. I love it when they give me these small sets of plans. It's a not, is that a 975? Can you see it's right on that first page? Oh, let me see it. Then. Right there, apostle data right there. 970. Nine, seven. It's 970. Nine, seven. Nine, seven. Yeah. Nine, seven. 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 So with four and having more than 40,000 square feet, that's already covered. It does not require additional set-aside land. That's not the house. That's not it? That's 970. Oh, is that the house? Is that it, Larry? Do you know? It says 970 right up here. It doesn't look like the house. Who's the owner? Madeira? Yeah, it's, it's uh, Lynn Middleton. All right. Um, I did say it's four bedrooms. Yep. So, Mr. Antonero, would we ask you to restrict 9A from further subdivision or further development of Oh, he just logged out. He's just coming back in. Sorry. That's all right. I just... He's back in. I think you would just stipulate that your, your decision is based on that being a four bedroom. Uh, Limited to a four better my 970. Yeah, all right. Okay. Yeah, 970 has sufficient square footage for four bedrooms. It has actually 4,000. Yeah. Any other board questions? Board questions? Mr. Gallo, are you all set? Yeah, I'm good. Mr. Green? I'm all set. All right. Um, so if we, I think we're almost there. Ms. Dantanero, there's, you know, a few things. Do you, do you, is there anything left for you to review or not to review? Mr. Tenero? Oh, he's muted. Mr. Tenero, you're muted. Sorry. I forwarded um, um, a review of the sub submittals, um, memorializing my findings, and I think uh, I'm good. Uh, and I recommend that should the board elect to approve the project, I have actually listed uh, some items to be included uh, for consideration as conditions of approval. So could I, maybe we could, um, it might be good to keep the public hearing open, but ask that they, that you, along with um, Mrs. DeBobrian and Mrs. Farinacci work on a decision letter for us to review uh, at the next meeting and close the public hearing and vote on the project at the next meeting once we have a decision letter with all the conditions regarding the nitrogen loading, the drainage, uh, grading, um, et cetera, in front of us. I think that would make a, uh, that would make perfect sense, Mr. Chairman. Do any board members have a comment on that? I agree with that. Idea. 
Okay, Mr. Green or Mr. Gallo, okay with that? Yes, yes. Um, all right, so what, what is the time limit? Where is our extension bring us to with the request from Mr. Silva's office? I believe we, an extension until this day. Yes. Right, until today. And our next meeting is October 20th. So we have to vote, we have to October 20th or the 16th? 20th? The 20th, 20th yes. Our, your next meeting is the 20th, yes. But you ha only have an extension until today, the 6th. <clears throat> so Mr. Silva, do you and the applicant agree to give us an extension to, um, November 1st or 15th, uh, so we can write a decision letter in one more meeting? If, if that's the direction that the board would like to go, that, that would be fine. I mean, you don't believe that you could vote and then just subject to the conditions being drafted? No. But if that's, if that you want to do it the other way, that's fine. We don't have anything to look at. We don't have a decision letter. We don't, I mean, we have, we got a, review at five o'clock tonight. So, I mean, it'd be nice to be able to see all the conditions written down. And, uh, <laughs> That's fine. In the meantime, we'll be dealing with East Bridgewater anyway, so. Well, I mean, and then, and then you'll have an opportunity to review the conditions before we vote on them that way as well. Okay. Right? So that, would, I mean, that would be fine. So. so if you, I can tell you verbally that we'll give you the extension to the, whatever's uh, after the 20th there, I guess, so. The first of 22nd, 23rd. Well, we need time to file it. Well, so first of November. <clears throat> so, yes. So, October 31st at midnight. How's that? Good. All right. Do we I have a. Larry's got to get the last word. word. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> Good. Based on um, Mr. Silva granting us the continuance, does anybody have any comments? Would somebody like to make a motion to continue it to um, October 20th? Yeah, I'll make a motion to continue to October 20th at 6.30. And I'll second it. By um, Mr. McDonald, second by Mr. Garino. Any discussion? Mr. Jemian? Yes. Mrs. Greeno? Yes. Mr. Geller? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Let me yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on the agenda, did, did you, before I got on, did you guys already take care of? Um, Crimson Heights, yes. Crimson Heights, okay. I believe Jay Gormley is on the call. So we have next, the public meeting we have is 232 Beach Street. Correct. Could you blow that up a little bit, Jasmine, so we can see the Oh, front. I'm sorry, I just, just closed it, sure thing. So okay. these are the two lots that they'll be creating. So is that, can you see that okay? Yep. Okay. Is there anybody that would like to speak on behalf of the Form A or has- I believe Mr. Jay Gormley is here. Okay. Um, Mr. Gormley. Thank you to the board. And I apologize not for not being there in the beginning. I had trouble logging on on my cell phone. I sincerely apologize. So this is a property at 232 Beach Street that along the way had considerable amount of land. Uh, along the way, uh, Quail Hollow LLC, Jay Gormley and Tony Shavs have in prior meetings sub, uh, subdivided two form A's. And then after that, the current owner of the property subdivided a retreat lot with the planning board to the ZBA. And then this presentation this evening is to 
subdivide from the original parcel of land, what is known as lot 3A, which to the best of our knowledge meets all of the criteria for a form A buildable lot in this zone. Our intention is to build a single family there um, with driveway, town water, and a private septic system. All right, so it meets the 150 feet of frontage at the 40 foot setback and the road. Um, do we have any department comments on this? When we did review it, it does meet all of, so it does meet the 150 feet of frontage. It has the 40 foot setback that also goes back along the property line. It does meet the front side and rear setbacks as well, and it has the appropriate square feet for a form A. So we didn't see any reason upon review to deny it based on the criteria for approving a form A. Okay. Any board questions in regards to the form A? Do we have a motion to endorse the form A? So moved. By Mr. Ajemian. Do we have a second? Second. By Mr. Geller. Any discussion? Um, Mrs. Garino? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Geller? Yes. Mr. Ajemian? Yes. And I'm a yes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Gormley. And I would like to thank the entire board for your assistance, along with the entire planning board staff. I appreciate your time. Thank, thank you, Jay. Thank you. I don't have any pair of boots with me, Mr. Gumley. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I, I do appreciate everything. From you. I'm actually barefoot as well. Okay. okay. <laughs> Have a nice day, everybody. You too. Thank you, you as well. Thank you. All right. Um, minutes of August 4th, 18th, 1st, and the 15th. So I reviewed these. I'd like to make some comments to staff on them, I, if we can hold off to the next meeting. Does anybody have has, does anybody have any comments on them that they'd like to get to staff on them? My, my only comment is um, not specifically to uh, each entry, but if we have a um, a project like Broad Street or anything even close to that, I would uh, I would argue that the minutes should be in much more detail, um, just in case there are issues down the road. In other words, what act people actually said specifically in, in a discussion. So, so legally, the minutes can't dictate what people said. We can't say like so and so said this and so and so said that in the minutes. We cannot do that. Well, they were a little. It was obviously more specific when uh, Les Door was doing it than, than what we're seeing right now. That's all I'm saying. Just a little more detail. My my comments were that I just want to, they should be written in the past the past tense, not the present tense. I feel like I'm reading a play. And I'm ready to act something out. So um, you know it it you know it it said like it it says things like so uh, so and so says or conversation ensues around and it's just it should be past tense it's a record of what happened it's not what's happening and the other thing is, is there's some public hearing uh language especially around 96 main street that i disagree with i think that the um record is inaccurate as to what actually happened so i i want to take some time and go back and watch that video That's fine. We're happy to take comments. Um, if, if people want to put comments in writing and send them to the office, we're happy to take those comments and put these off for your next meeting. Mr. Chairman, would you like all of these on for the next meeting or should I hold meeting minutes from this meeting until the one after since that would be five sets of minutes for you to review? I mean, I don't know how I mean, I think 
a month ago we asked for these to be reviewed and I, I still think they need a lot of work. So if they can be done, if they can all be done by then and if somebody can watch the videos, go back and make it all past tense instead of present tense and get an accurate record of what happened with some of these public hearings, then we can do all of them. But I just think that they, you know, every set I looked at, I had an issue with, so. And when I did first read them, I did make comment as to the fact that they were written in present and I thought they should be passed. I think that was about a month ago. Would it be helpful if I sent out just these minutes one more time, just as themselves for everybody to review or would you like this to revise them and then send them out again prior to the meeting? So we have them in front of us now. You mean send them out again? Just individually so that you had them to review. But if you if we can revise these and then send them out again I mean, prior I, to the next hearing once they've been revised. So I printed the whole packet off. I already have them. I okay. Mean, I don't see. I mean, do you, I guess I'm confused. You mean we have it in front of us in the link, right? right. I just want to make sure everybody had the opportunity to review them or if they need them in a separate file just as the minutes by themselves to make it easier. I would say this, if, if anybody needs them, let us know and we will send them to you. We won't send them to the group. We will send them to people individually if they request them. Thank you, Jennifer. That's what I meant. <laughs> That's a better way to say that. And I guess I have an, I guess I have an access Dropbox. So you can still access them like tomorrow, the next day in the Dropbox, correct? Yes. I, yes, that doesn't, I don't think ours has a nope. termination on it. Nope, as long as you still have that Dropbox link, you have access to it until, unless we delete the information, which we won't. No. I mean, those, those are basically my comments. If you want me to put them in writing, I can go, I can read them well, all. I, I mean, are we, we hear the, the issue with the past versus present tense, so we will take care of that. But if you, if you have specific comments about the, the public hearing information or how, you know, uh, things are, are codified, uh, that stuff we would need more specifics on, Pat. All right, so I'll watch that video. And, I, and those videos can be accessed on the, the Facebook page. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll have Jasmine send you all the YouTube link tomorrow so you can watch whichever meetings you choose. They should all be up on the YouTube page. All right, that'd be great if you could send all, if we have four sets of minutes, those four links would be great. Yeah, uh, absolutely. One link to the whole page and all the minute meetings are up there. All right, okay. thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, any board committee liaison reports? Just that we haven't received any new applications for the 20th at this point. So as of right now, I believe it will just be Saritam Way and some continuations. Okay. They're having a um, ground. Um, yeah, ground digging, whatever, at the McElwain. Groundbreaking. Groundbreaking. Yes. <laughs> On um, what's it? It's a Tuesday. It's a to the tenth coming up. Next Tuesday at ten fifteen. Yeah. You you were if you should have all received an email invitation as planning board members. Um, you were supposed to RSVP if you were going to attend. I'll be at work. <laughs> I'm not around Tuesday the tenth. Tuesday the tenth. You said. I think it's the 12th, Tuesday the 12th. Did everybody yeah. receive that link? I, I'm not available Tuesday, so. Okay. All right, do we have a motion to adjourn? I'll move. All right, Mr. Geller, do we have a second? No second. By right, Mrs. Garino, any discussion? Mr. Ajemian? Yes. Mrs. Garino? Yes. Mr. Geller? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Let me ask. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank Have a good you. evening. Have a good Thank night. You as well.